You've been we've been with the the brand and the company for for many years, and it's sort of taken for granted now. You see it at Starbucks, you see it at the grocery store. Uh, my wife doesn't use anything else in her coffee, but can you talk about the origins of where the idea actually came from? The idea, you know, uh, this whole company was was based on the idea of just making a better milk, uh, a milk that was designed for human beings and better for the planet. And um, that's what I think we do, you know. And, and with our process, you know, we have a kernel of oats. We make it liquid. And throughout that whole process, we keep all the goodness of oats uh, w without adding anything. Um, and, and, you know, I think that's really important because it, it was it was born out of Swedish science. And and, um, and that's a heritage that we, we honor. So as a company, you know, it, it's like the expertise around oats and also how deep we go into oats, into, into genome of oats and then the fraction of oats and what that does to the body. So, so they, that's basically it. But you know, it doesn't really get relevant, relevant, you know, unless you really connect with people. So, so that part, the emotional part of the business, is super important for us as well. You know, we we follow uh, plant-based meat now, obviously uh, to a large degree, because some of the companies there are public, and a lot of the research around it uh, sort of uses plant-based beverages as a template, saying, "Well, look at what beverages did." in displacing traditional product, imagine what meat can do. I wonder if you think that second wave in meat has sort of accelerated and, and rejuvenated maybe the trend that beverages had to begin with. Absolutely. And you've got to remember, this is just the beginning of the whole curve. We're still at the early stage. You know, if you look at the household penetration across the world, yeah, it's about 15, 60 percent in the U.S. But if you look at yogurt, you know, cheese or frozen, it's just down to 4 percent or so. And it's less in Europe and and elsewhere. So this is, there's still a lot to do. So we haven't seen the massive acceleration yet, and that is yet to come. But I think this, uh, both um, uh, what we do in the meat replacement space or, or plant-based uh, milk, it, it's just uh, it's just an expression of what's going on in the world today, how, how people are becoming more conscious and aware of their own consumption, how that impacts the world and themselves. Yeah, Tony Morgan here. I, I have to tell you, I've got Oatly in my fridge right now. Huge fan. Good. We use it every morning in our coffee. Um, so it's good to have you on. I'm curious, how quickly is the company growing right now? And given the fact that there do seem to be a lot of competitors and, dare I even say, copycats in the market, how are you navigating that? Yeah, I mean, um, hey, you know, in terms of copycats, like we are, we're the original. And, and I think today you got to have great uh, products, really, you know, fantastic, amazing products. But it's more than that today for people. It's about who you are as a company, what you stand for. So, yeah, we might make oat milk, but, but, but the idea of the company is way bigger than that. And, and, and that's based out of sustainability because we all know that what needs to happen is, is the shift from animal-based food to plant-based food. I think and scientists, institutions all around the world all agree upon that. Uh, and um, I think that's what we're driving, the bigger idea. If you have sustainability in the center of things, you can propel the whole business um, into a different dimension. And, and that's what I, see, I think is happening. And that's why we are performing so well versus the, the competition. Uh, Mr. Peterson, the dairy industry would say there's only one kind of milk, the kind of milk that comes from a cow. They don't want you to use the word milk or and, and or any others who uh, append uh, milk to their beverage. Is that an issue for you or could it be in the future? Hey, you know what? I don't think it's fair that we can't call ourselves uh, milk. You know, I think that is the, the right word for what we're doing. Does it matter? You know, I'm not sure. Um, and, and obviously, I don't, you know, I think cow's milk are designed for baby cows. And what we're trying to do, what we try to do and what we have is something that is designed for human beings and our bodies. And what we need in terms of macronutrients, you know, proteins, carbs, fibers, unsaturated fats, you know. So, yeah, I know this is a debate, but, but uh, I think what the science, you know, what science says and, and what we believe in, I think it's the right direction.